Greetings, this is the Questing GM, and this is RPG Day 2020, Day 30. And the word of the day is Portal. Easiest way to talk about Portal in role-playing games is, well, there's magical portals, you know, typical fantasy RPG, which I'll probably talk a little bit more on. The idea of the magic circle, or, you know, uh, the moment that we all agree to immerse ourselves into the game that we're playing, into the fiction that we are playing, we enter through a portal into the gaming experience and that's one way, I mean, that's probably one usage of the word portal. The word portal has actually been quite a, of an interest to me more recently because I'm currently running a D&D game that is uh, centered upon Sigil, City of Doors and you know that's a whole, that's an entire city uh, that is most famous for its portals that takes you anywhere across the multiverse of the D&D &D, D &D lore. And and the players have been you know planner hopping around several places in and out of Sigil, and they'll be probably going back to Sigil pretty soon. Planner hopping uh, uh, campaigns has definitely been one idea that I've been trying to really you know really build an entire campaign around that. Planescape obviously had been the ideal campaign setting for that sort of thing. Uh, but my inspiration actually comes from an anime called Super Chronicles, which is literally jumping into jumping into new worlds, entering through portals at every at the end of every episode or sometimes even extended episodes and there's like an entire I believe there's an entire overarching plot about look, looking for feathers, magical feathers, uh, and 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 piecing together a princess's soul. So yeah, you know, it it's a pretty interesting premise, uh for and reason to be, you know, to go plan a hop. And this is probably one type of adventure that if you read closely into D D fifth edition's uh design philosophies, you can actually see that it's actually sort of built in. Uh, but maybe not a lot of people are aware of that. But this video in particular, I this is one of the rare occasions and the rare chance that it actually makes me allows me to really crack open my own small little RPG collection and to talk about a bit more about portal and portal mechanics and one of the things one of the things that I never really got to use in a game in the games that I've run uh, in, which is set in a particular setting and that book and that setting turns out to be this the Forgotten Realms campaign setting from 3rd edition and it was uh, here that I actually stumbled upon uh, rules for portals uh, and if you look into page 59, but I think one of my favorite things was actually the artwork of the portals. I'm not sure if I can show it here. Uh, yeah, this is the world of portals. And this is actually where you get to see a lot of interesting things. There's a lot of interesting mechanics in, re in regards to portals. And I'm not sure this is uh, true to uh, you know other d, d settings in general, but Portals actually do play a very significant part or has a significant place in Forgotten Realms and its lore and setting. There's a wonderful series of articles back from the 3.x days. I think I'm not sure, I think it's called Perilous Gateways by Ed Greenwood himself, who he really he writes articles about, you know, well known or secret portals that are, you know, peppered throughout the realms and there's a whole bunch of backstory and lore that is tied with them, uh, and how they work and where do they take you and some of the lore that's known behind uh, each portal and, or how they got to it. All these stories of portals has a basis on how portals work in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, so in, in, in the Forgotten Realms, you have rules about how to detect portals. Uh, there used to be even a spell for it, like you had how to, uh, for detecting portals, how to operate portals. Uh, you needed a key for certain portals for them in order to, for them to work or to take you to places that you want them to. Uh, you can seal portals as well, you know, either by destroying them or using certain types of magic. Uh, and then there are different types of portals. Uh, there are one-way portals, two-way portals. Uh, there are portals. There are there are portals that can take you to several places. Uh, there are portals that can take you. Uh, there are only like creature creature only portals. So it was here when I was when I first read this in the campaign setting. Uh, it that that really really opened up. A lot of ideas of how to use portals and it's not just it's not simply just a travel device it's a unknown travel device that requires a lot more study uh, to be a bit more careful of using it and it's actually a rarity in some sense uh, that in, at least in, in the context of Forgotten Realms that you know portals are not really a dime of a dozen there's a lot of research that has to go into finding portals knowing how to use them going going to a to your destination that doesn't involve you getting you know getting killed in the process 
Uh, and you know maybe there are reasons to be destroying portals as well because you don't want certain access for certain people to certain places. Definitely, you know if you really want to think about how portals can be more interesting in your camping setting, and I can I can I can understand why you know you why you don't want portals to be too complicated. The way the Forgotten Realm setting does it, uh, really, uh, adds a lot of flavor to portals. Uh, and like I mentioned as well in the in the series of articles, so that's definitely something that, that's worth. Uh, looking into and checking out uh, if you haven't already and you know this, those are this is some of the things that just makes makes me love the Forgotten Realms for those reasons and I wasn't expecting to talk about portals in RPG a day so thanks for the opportunity I guess and I will see you on our last day of RPG a day 2020 day 31